Hello world! Welcome back to another Try Hack Me video. In this video, we'll be walking through the challenge room disgruntled. Let's get into it. Hey kid! Good you're here! Not sure if you've seen the news, but an employee from the IT department of one of our clients, Cyber T, got arrested by the police. The guy was running a successful phishing operation as a side gig. Cyber T wants us to check if this person has done anything malicious to any of their assets. Get set up, grab a cup of coffee, and meet me in the conference room. Then it just shows you how to connect to the machine, which we already have open over here. So we can go ahead and click complete it on that task. Now the next task just gives us a little Linux forensics cheat sheet, and I have it open down here. But hopefully we can remember everything from memory, so we won't have to look at it. And so I will go ahead and click completed for that task as well. Now task three is really where it starts. Here's the machine our disgruntled IT user last worked on. Check if there's anything our client needs to be worried about. My advice, look at the privileged commands that were run. That should get you started. Okay, so our first question is, the user installed a package on the machine using elevated privileges. According to the logs, what is the full command? Okay, so for installed packages, we can actually take a look at auth.log because whenever commands are ran with elevated privileges, they end up in the auth.log log. And that log is located in the slash var slash log directory. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll use cat to print it out to the screen. And here we have a lot of log entries. Now, if we scroll up, we're gonna notice that some of them have a command associated with them. And we're actually looking for a command. So we can actually kind of limit our search results here by filtering by lines that strictly have the command parameter right here in their log entry. So let's go ahead and do that. What we'll do is we'll run the same command again, and then we'll pipe that into grep, tack i for a case insensitive search, and then we'll just type in command. And then it'll highlight it for us so we don't actually have to look that hard for the commands. Now we're looking for the command that actually installed a package using elevated privileges. So we're looking for something of kind of an apt command like we see right here. And that looks like it fits the answer format. So that's probably it. Whatever this doku wiki package is, is going to be our answer. Now remember, we can copy from inside here to out here, but we can't copy from out here into inside the terminal. So let's paste that in and submit. All right, our next question is, what was the present working directory, PWD, when the previous command was run? So in that same line, we'll be able to see the working directory right here that's associated with it. And it's in slash home slash cyber T. So we'll copy that and paste that in as well and submit that. All right, let's move on to task four. Keep going. Our disgruntled IT was supposed to only install a service on this computer. So look for commands that are unrelated to that. Which user was created after the package from the previous task was installed? Okay, so we're gonna look for a user add command in here and it's gonna be after, so we're gonna scroll down and look for it. We could use grep again, but I think it's better if we just kind of look through the command so that we have all of them here for when we need to look through them further. And we can see add user right here and the user added ends up being IT admin, which is right here. So we'll go ahead and copy that and paste that in. A user was then later given pseudo privileges. When was the pseudoers file updated? Okay, so we're gonna look for the pseudoers file. VI sudo is actually the command you use to securely modify the pseudoers file. So this day right here is going to be when this command was accessed. So let's go ahead and copy that as our next answer. And I believe that says December 28th, 62734. So let's submit that. A script file was opened using the VI text editor. What is the name of this file? So if we look down at the next command entry right here, we can see that there is a bomb.sh file opened with VI. So bomb.sh is going to be our answer. All right, moving on to task five. That bomb.sh file is a huge red flag. While a file is already incriminating in itself, we still need to find out where it came from and what it contains. The problem is that the file doesn't exist anymore. What is the command used that created the file bomb.sh? Well, while I would say vi, it looks like that doesn't fit the answer format, so we're gonna need to go somewhere else to find this information out. Let's go ahead and give this a little clear so we have a clean slate to work from as I believe we're done with that log file now. 
and we're going to go to home and you'll notice that there's a cyber t it admin and ubuntu user remember it admin is the user that was created by the elevated privileged user so we're going to go inside there then we're going to do a ls tag al so that we can display the hidden directories and files and we can see that there's a bash history here so let's cat that out because remember the bash history shows the user's bash commands and we can see that these curl commands were used on a remote website to essentially grab whatever was on the remote website and save it to a bomb.sh file on the current host so that is the command we're looking for that actually created the file if you'll notice they ran it twice here so let's paste that in the file was renamed and moved to a different directory what is the full path of this file now? Remember how bomb.sh was open in VI? Well, VI has the ability to allow you to run commands and such in it, and .vim info actually holds the command history for the VI editor. So we can actually take a look at that file next, and we'll see right here in this command line history section that our bomb.sh file was saved in the bin folder as os-update.sh. So this is going to be our renamed bomb.sh file. When was the file from the previous question last modified? Well, we can easily find that out by running an ls tac l on that file, assuming it still exists inside of the slash bin folder, and it appears that it does. So the last time it was modified was on December 28th, 629. So we'll copy that and paste that in as our next answer. What is the name of the file that will get created when the file from the first question executes? Well, we can easily find that out by just simply printing out the script. So we'll do cat slash bin slash os update.sh and we can see that this, I told you, you'll regret this, good riddance, ha ha ha, Mr. Meister is getting redirected into goodbye.txt. So goodbye.txt will be the file we're looking for. Let's move on to task six. So we have a file and a motive. The question we now have is, how will this file be executed? Surely he wants it to execute at some point. At what time will the malicious file trigger? Well, if you remember from the logs, there were some cron tab entries. So we just need to check Etsy cron tab to see when this file is scheduled to execute. And we're just looking for a time. So to read the cron tab file, the scheduling here, the first number is going to be the minutes, which you can see right here. And then the second number is going to be the hours. We know that it's going to be eight o'clock AM for this answer. All right, let's move on to the conclusion. Thanks to you, we now have a good idea of what our disgruntled IT person was planning. We know that he had downloaded a previously prepared script into the machine, which will delete all the files of the installed service if the user has not logged into this machine in the last 30 days. It's a textbook example of a logic bomb, that's for sure. Look at you, second day on the job, and you've already solved two cases for me. Tell Sophie I told you to give you a raise. I'm kidding, of course, but you did good, kid. So we'll complete the final task here. And there we go, we've completed the room. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. thanks for watching. Goodbye world.